Okay, so I think we should start. Uh, the next speaker is Julian Chara uh, from Colombia, SIPA. Uh, he's, the, um, uh, he's talking on behalf of the Action Network, Global Network on Silvopastoral Systems. Uh, he will speak for about 25 minutes and if you have questions you can ask at the end or you can put them in the chat and then we will take it when, when Julian is done with his presentation. And yeah, at the end we will have another 10 minutes break um, and then this, the next speaker will be uh, Ulf on Livestock Antimicrobial uh, Partnership. Julian, the floor is yours, you can start. Thank you, Lavinia, Peter, and all of you who organized uh, this, this uh, event. I will be presenting on behalf of the Global Network on Silvopastoral System, both by myself and uh, on behalf of Pablo Peri, who is from INTA, Argentina, and who is the co-chair of the Global Network on Silvopastoral System. And I'm going to talk a bit, a bit about the diversity and resilience in Silvopastoral Systems and how mixed systems and also uh, different perspectives can help in increase it, increase the resilience and uh, other benefits of these uh, systems for livestock production. So first. Hello. Of all, OK. Yeah. OK, Priscilla, bye. There you go. So first of all, uh, uh, we, we rely a lot on, on uh, grazing. And in, in general, in, in the world, there is a, a great uh, of area um, in use for, for grazing. Um, most of the of the land, of the arable land in, in the world is, is uh, being grazed at the moment. It accounts for around 80% of agricultural land. And um, in uh, focusing on Latin America, 60 to 70% of the grazing land that has that, that is there mm -hmm. was before a, a forest, either a dry forest in the case of Central America, North, well, some other regions of, of, of uh, Latin America and also humid forests that were converted to this, this land, uh, to grazing lands. And I want to emphasize on that because we have to uh, somehow try to mimic the natural systems where we are uh, seated. And uh, it's very important to know where, what was before in that, in that area we are covering with grass at the moment for, for livestock production. Um, in general, our tropical countries rely a, a, a lot on, on grazing mainly pastures for, for producing calories, as well as, as Asian, as, as you can see in, in the left-hand side graph. And also it's important to know that in, 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 on the other side, those who produce a lot of crops, um, a great deal of them, 45%, um, goes to producing fuel and feed for animals. So there is, there is something that we have to, have to check in there because they're producing um, this uh, food that should be to go to hum human uh, to humans directly and uh, passing it through animals could be uh, a way of, of, of being inefficient or creating some problems in the in the environment. So um, we have uh, the increase of greenhouse gas emissions and as producing some implications on productivity, and we have to uh, somehow adapt to that to to continue producing. Uh, the increased demand of protein for the world. Also, livestock is, is uh, blamed of uh, producing a lot of greenhouse gases. I don't want to, to go in, in, in detail into that, but I just, just want to point out that Latin America, or, or those, those regions that have a, rely a lot on beef production from cattle, um, are, have more um, emissions from, the, from, that, uh, from that side, of course, and those who rely more on uh, monogastrics, they uh, have less of that uh, emissions produced by, by cattle. But uh, this, uh, this um, no, is not only, I mean, the, the livestock production is, is not only one of the, of the reasons to produce climate change, but is, as it relies a lot on, on, the, on the land, is one of the most affected by climate change. So increased uh, growth, increased uh, uh, floods, and also more, um, Fire events are a problem that can affect, can affect production in this type of land. So this was uh, an Amazon forest before and was converted to this simplified system. And I think that uh, this going to monoculture is one of the of the main problems that has that uh, in helps in, in increasing the 
the impact of, of uh, animal production on the environment. So on the side of, of uh, the problems that the climate causes to, to production, we have a lot of situations in which we can pass both from flooding to dry to, to a drought and also increase amount of, of frost and, and even a, a, when, when the, there is a lot of, of water that, that become frosted and causes trouble, trouble even in tropical countries. And on the other hand, we have this situation in which we have decided to produce in, a, in, in these intensive systems in which um, they, they can rely, they, they don't have that uh, problems of, of uh, feed production and uh, how that, uh, those animals are going to be fed and, and, and are, let's say, more stable according to the climate. But on the other hand, they produce a lot of damage in, in, in the areas where they are and a lot of consumption of resources, water, water resources, and a lot, of, a lot of air pollution that is, is problematic. And one thing that is um, a problem also is that food is produced in, 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 in some region and consumed some, somewhere else. And this, this traffic of, of uh, food or feed in this case, is also causing trouble, and it causes trouble both where it is produced because this one is uh, Mississippi Valley uh, River is one of the most uh, sedimented in the world because of this production of, of, of uh, corn, but also causes trouble where the animals are concentrated to feed. And so probably an integrated approach would be uh, more sustainable. But in the case of cattle, it's culturally in the in the in the heart of, of many people around the world, both pastoralists in in, in different parts of, of, of the of the world. And in Latin America, the um, Spaniards, when, when they colonized the the area, um, brought this culture of, of uh, cattle, uh, raising cattle production, and even it is a, a uh, cultural patrimony in many in many areas of, of the Latin America. This is the gaucho communities in, in the south, and all all of them has has a lot of cultural things related to, to cattle. So it's important to to have them into account. So this cattle ranching probably is not going to reduce much because of the growing demand, but also because it has deep roots on, on, on people. And even if these the, there are problems with um, adaptation and and the resilience of these systems, they are somehow a way to become resilient. For many people, uh, is uh, is what they have to uh, as a banking uh, for savings, but also the activity where they go when they when they have failure failure in other in other crops in which it is not easy to to succeed in these uh, um, far uh, places. So to be sustainable, cattle grazing ha has to generate better social, economic, and environmental returns. We have, we, we can, I mean, my point is that we can rely on, on, on grazing for producing beef and dairy and other, uh, many other products, but that has, has to be done in conjunction with the nature and in integrated systems. And we try to, to take advantage of the natural capacity of animals in general, in this case cows, but also uh, many other ruminants to um, harvest uh, trees and shrubs and, and we, we want to use that in the systems. So in these systems of silvopastoral systems, the, the, the reason, as uh, Dr. Jose says, an, in, an intensive <clears throat> integration that the, uh, is intensive in interaction. Uh, so it is intentional integration, integrated, intensive, and interacts a lot. And you have to take, to take a, a, an equilibrium between the animal, the grass, and the tree, or the shrub, in case you have shrubs in, in the system. So the tree is a, a key element for many reasons. We have, we have, we can take advantage of, of, of the increased production in the, in the, in the upper area, but also take advantage of, of the huge amount of interactions that are in the soil. But we have to, um, the, we rely on that when we change from a monoculture of grass to a, to a, a place where we have also trees and grass uh, and, and shrubs for the production. And this has, uh, I don't want to go into detail with this, but it has a lot of, of interactions both that are productive and both that uh, contribute to environment, to um, biodiversity, to reduce um, um, and vulnerability to, to, to climate change and to increase to increase in mitigation of, of greenhouse gas, uh, gases emitted in the system. So that, that's a, uh, uh, this integration allows us to have both mitigation and adaptation. 
so there are many many uh, uh, arrangements of of um, of uh, silvopastoral systems. Uh, again, we, we classify them into intensive and non-intensive. And intensive are, are uh, those scattered trees, wind breaks, like, like fences and um, grazing plantations. And intensives are those who combine also shrubs in high density for being uh, either browsed directly by cattle or, or uh, cut and carry. So these are examples of, of non-intensive systems. In these, the, the use of live fences is very important in the tropics or in many other places because you replace the use of, of, of the forest to produce the fences. So if when, when you put this leaf uh, in live fences, not only have better comfort for animals, but also reduce the pressure on biodiversity and on adjacent forests. And the intensive silvopastoral systems I mentioned, there are three or four species we use, Leucaena or uh, Leucaena, Guasuma, Titonia. Um, but the, the fact is that they are uh, planted at high density and are directly consumed by the, by the animals. That's, that, that's the, main, the main focus. And they are managed in a, in a in intensive way. So we have here um, a, a system that has also take advantage of, of, of the radiation of the solar, solar energy we have uh, for free in, in different strata, both for producing timber or fruits or any, any other product for producing the, the shrubs for feeding directly the animals and to have also highly productive pastures on, on beneath. So that the uh, three layers, in this case, or even four or five layers, have um, not only higher product productivity, but also uh, interact be between themselves and the animals to uh, increase production. So these are type of systems in, in the uh, dry tropics with different species, in this case, native species in, in, in the canopy, and uh, the leucaena in the leucina in, the, in these rows. And a similar system in Australia, where we somehow take, took the, the information of, of Locaen and, and is planted in these systems now. And uh, in, in, in Australia, there are around 300,000 hectares of, of these type of systems in which uh, a lot of the, the beef that, are, that is exported from in Australia is produced. And they, they use this type of uh, mansion, which there, there is also an adaptation measure because they, these plants have been selected be, because of their capacity to tolerate um, frost. So they, they dry somehow. These, these are actually rec being recovered from, from a frost. And uh, immediately, uh, in, once the, the winter st stops, they start growing fast and being uh, used by, by the animals again. And these are hedgerows that are, that are also some adaptation done in, in the tropics, but is used a lot also in Europe and in some, some other regions of, of the world with different species that can be directly browsed by animals or cut and carry. And all, of course, grazing timber plantation, that is, that is a an, an very, very important integration in which you, you produce uh, like the cash flow with the animals and the saving with the, with the timber that you are producing there. But I, they are diverse also in the, in the type of animals that are, are being used. There is, there is an increased number of, of a, a free range chicken that needs these uh, trees also to, to have a welfare and also have more uh, food uh, available. There is uh, mm, pork that is produced also in, in La Esa that has a, a very important export for, from that region. And also goats or, or sheep in different parts of the world, in the Chaco or in North America with different species. So they, there are a, a diversity of uses of these, these systems and, and also a diversity of species that can, that can be um, grown in the, in, the, in the systems. So resilience, with resilience we want to, to uh, reduce the risk and reduce the, the, the exposure hazard and vulnerability of, of the systems through an integration in this case. The, the integration according to, to some uh, uh, papers shows that if you have um, um, different species planted in, 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 the, in, the, in the place, you can have a re reduced um, individual production per species, but an increased uh, production per, per, per the total system. So that, that's something that, that is, very important for us is that you can you can um, have other crops or other use of the system and, and the total biomass that you can produce there is not, not only higher but also a variety that can produce food, feed, and uh, some other benefits for, for the system and for the animals. So there are the, uh, different types of, of uh, uh, 
showing how these, these systems can be uh, resilient in different studies. Um, for example, this one shows how the, the, the integration of, of trees into the system helps not only to adaptation, but also to mitigation and uh, some synergies that are very important in the system because it's you, you you can try you have to you have to try to both reduce the, the pressure on the environment by reducing the greenhouse gases but also reduce your vulnerability to climate change. So for adaptation or resilience, this, this is the result of, of an study done in, in Central America and Colombia, in which the, the what what is being used for adaptation are different strategies that include uh, uh, based on silvopastoral system, many of them, but include um, a lot of technical assistance and better climatic information for the for the farmers so that they can plant the trees and the crops in the right moment. Uh, the, the, the introduction of fuller banks and, and fuller conservation is has been a key for them to reduce their vulnerability to this long and more um, reliable, long dry drought period and, and less reliable in terms of when they appear. Of course, having water harvesting in, in different uh, landscape and, and, and farm level and um, different strategies and arrays of the trees to conserve and so humidity and to reduce the impact of radiation or wind or uh, snow in the case of, of, of uh, we talk about temperate systems. Um, for the increased increase solar radiation that we will have with climate change, the use of multi-story multi um, systems can help reduce the radiation and take full advantage of the increase of biomass production. So in this case, the solar radiation can be a problem if it, if it, is, in, if it is increased because it increases the temperature and, in, and increase the, the, the probability of drought and, and, and suffering some problems for the animals. But uh, if you take advantage of that with multi-story systems, you can you can actually capture that in biomass that can be used in the system or can be used for, for um, preserve, uh, conservation. So shade to reduce, increase shade to reduce the, the impact on the on the soil and increase uh, also animal welfare. So we are going to show just I'm going to show you just a few examples of, of how that can happen in, in many areas according to several studies. In this case, this this uh, is studying the evapotranspiration in El Niño, which is an event which is a drought in, in Colombia, and La Niña, which is an event which, which has a, a lot of rain, excess rain in Colombia. In, in other regions of the world, of, of the Latin America, it, it works differently. But in, in this case, yeah, we have systems without, treeless systems with, without, without trees, as without trees, silvopastoral system with leucaena, and silvopastoral system with leucaena and mango, which is a, 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 a very interesting silvopastoral system that have, was planted in the region. But we can see how the, the, the reduction in the evapotranspiration, how that can be in that can increase the productivity of the system, but also reduce the, the, the risk of, of uh, losing the water that is so important in dry and wet season. And also, and also um, the, uh, in, in the, when it's also rainy, the, situ the situation is, is, is the same. The, the, you reduce the, the, the um, evapotranspiration. And also the, the impact of, of uh, trees in a skin temperature and respiratory rate of, of both uh, cattle in, in, north, in the north of South America. And here, the important thing is that in the morning, there, there are no problems because the, the, the system behave more or less the same and there are no high, high temperature, in this case, skin temperature of the animals. But in the afternoon, you can see how the animals can suffer even uh, uh, temperatures above 40 degrees and, and it means they are having heat stress. But if you put some trees that is reduced and if, if you, uh, some shrubs right, that is reduced and if you include trees or the combination of trees and shrubs as in the intensity of the system, the temperature of the skin can be even lower during the afternoon than, than, than it is in the, in the morning. So this situation is, is animal welfare and is reflected in productivity. And also the, the respiratory rate has shows a, a similar pattern in which the animals um, um, have less respiratory rate and, and uh, that, that is a respond, response to heat stress. This chart shows on one hand the productivity of cows per day in a Latico farm in Colombia. And in these red lines, the amount of rain per month. And, and you can see how there are, there are areas, moments of El, El Nino event, which, which you have for a long period of time, less than 100 millimeters of rain per month. 
which is a, a drought, and periods of La Nina event in which you have a lot of rain during during couple, those two or three months, uh, or or during a long period of time, as, as is this case. And as you can see the productivity of the of per animal is around 10 liters per, per cow per day, and it doesn't change much according to uh, either if it is rainy, uh, dry, sorry, dry or rainy during a long time. So this is showing how this system with an intensive sort of pastoral system that many of, the, uh, of, of people visited uh, during the MSP in Colombia, and how this kind of, uh, how the, it shows how resilient the system is in terms of productivity. This type of strategy with solar banks has been used in, in, the, in the dry areas of, of Colombia. Is is an alternative you have you have to reduce the, the vulnerability during dry season, but also preserving this in diff by different means is also very important. So producing a lot of shrubs with high protein, both with, with uh, energy uh, crops, but they being stored during the during the rain during the rainy and growing season too. Have that available for the for the rice season is very important. And among those in the silvopastoral system, there is, for example, this tree, this tree that you can use the fruits also to produce silage and keep keep it for for the for the for the animals for the animals yeah, during the dry season. You can see here that how this tree is green even we have when we have a, a very dry season in the, in the system. And I I wanted to, I wanted to take this this uh, information from from the USDA National Agroforestry Center. In which uh, they 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 um, are showing how they are using windbreaks, both for for reducing the impact of of uh, snow uh, and the storms, and and also from wind in in different areas, both for for uh, areas where it's planted, for grazing or for for uh, agriculture. And how there is a lot of studies on, on on this and how to reduce the impact of of these um, extreme events on the production. Of our animal or agriculture. And this is a result of a frost event in, in Colombia, in which, as you can see, all the grass was lost because of the low temperature for, during a couple of days in the, in the high Andes. And how this, this uh, hedgerow of, of uh, Sambucus peruviana keep very green during, the, during that time, but not only for, uh, keeps the, the amount of food that you can, you can use for the animals when there is a reduction of grass, but also can protect the trees that are that are growing in the middle of them. So this type of uh, uh, arrangements are, are very important and, and taking into account the, the uh, extreme events that can happen in, in, in the region. So with that, I want to, to finish. I, I just, just to mention that the, um, it's very important to keep the mixed systems and a more diverse silvopastoral system, system is more resilient to climate change in most of the cases, uh, and that uh, it can reduce the vulnerability of farmers to, to uh, different uh, events and to increase climate change that will be, ha will be happening during the next following decades. And also there are, there are um, demonstrations that, that, that is working in, in the field. There are still a lot of, a lot of information we have to collect to, to uh, take advantage of all these advantages, of the, all those these benefits that the system have. And also um, is, is very important from several of the, of the studies to, to strengthen the the use of this uh, system by, by industries like, like uh, she, uh, dairy, dairy production systems or cheese production that can uh, uh, recognize the value of, of these systems and the, how they can reduce the deforestation and many, many other uh, ways of um, degradation of the soil and, and the environment. Um, thank you. I just want to finish by inviting you to the next Civil Pastoral International Congress that will be held in Mexico virtually in November. Thank you. Thank you, Julian, um, for your information. That event is already also on Gazel webpage if you want to have a look and register. Um, yeah. yeah, it was very interesting uh, presentation. Um, is there someone that has a question? Oh, there's a question for you on, on the chat. It's quite long, so let me see if I can. Uh, so it says pastoralists are considered to be some of the most resilient producers. However, the fact of climate change is forcing them to take actions that may lead to less resilience. For example, in Africa and in the Horn of Africa in particular, we are seeing pastoralists abandon livestock species such as local indigenous cattle and moving to camel uh, to camel keeping. 
since camels are more resilient, which may lead to loss of biodiversity and genetic resources. Is, it, is this a general trend or how would the network like um, the global network and civil pastoral system could help uh, in addressing the issue? I think, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you for the, for, the, for the question. I think that in, in general, the, whenever you try to specialize in a species, you, you, you may reduce uh, the, an increased vulnerability because uh, in some cases that, that species could be a response and an adequate response for a, for a moment, for, a, for some period to a uh, um, problem that you're going to, you are going to have or you are having at the moment. But also somehow they, they can, uh, if you write in just one species, start, start losing the, 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 the flexibility that you can have. So um, our, our uh, uh, idea from the, from the government level is to, is, is to exchange information from different, from different regions. And in some areas that what, what uh, the people is doing is in increasing the amount of the species they use in, in the region. It doesn't, it doesn't occur with pastoralists. I have seen that in, in, in some uh, island areas of, of South America in which um, people is mixing uh, what they usually have like sheep with other species, uh, including native species like, like llama and others that uh, can uh, browse on different, on different plants and therefore using, using more, more the system. But more, more than more than that, um, what um, we we could we could see from the past webinar we have uh, an, an examples from, from Africa is that people have to also try to uh, introduce a species uh, uh, of trees and plants that, that can that can help in that uh, resilience by by being more more tolerant to some uh, drought events or to some situations that are happening in in, in the region. Um, just answering to Maria that just uh, asked me whether this presentation will be available. Yes, um, it, will, it will be on Gazel website and on Gazel YouTube page. Why did you it? Someone is with the mic on. Is there some other questions for, for Julian? You can raise your hand or just speak freely. So far, we don't see questions. Um, okay, we we have in three minutes. We have another break of ten minutes before having the next speaker. So we will stay here connected. If you have questions, uh, I hope Julian will be here as well. He can mm -hmm. answer. Us. Otherwise, um, yeah, feel free to stay here, uh, have a conversation here. Otherwise, we will connect again in ten minutes.